This is Exploring Chiropractic, Episode 3. We're going to talk about New Zealand Chiropractic College with Brian Lanou, who is a student down there. And uh, before we get started, just want to say thanks to all those who have been watching the show so far. Last week's episode uh, with Angel Achua from LifeWest got already 100 views, so I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, we are available also on iTunes as a audio download, so if you're out driving in the car and want to take a listen to it, just search for Exploring Chiropractic on iTunes, and you can download it there. And please subscribe. It helps uh, our ratings and helps get the word out to other people. Uh, keep checking the website, exploringchiropractic.com. Got some more stuff going up there. And we're all over the place as well, uh, Facebook, Twitter, uh, and Google+. So our Facebook group's kind of been growing pretty nicely. We've got, I think, 70 people that have joined it just in the last week. So I, I think I contribute that a little bit to Spinal Column Radio as well as last week's episode with Angel. So let's get into this week's show. I want to introduce Brian Lanou, who is a student down in New Zealand. How you doing? Doing great. How are you, Nathan? Good. It's kind of a pain getting people on here, but I like the Google Hangout format. Um, hopefully, once the word gets out a little bit more, we'll get more people joining in at the same time. But it looks like tonight it's just you and me. All right. That's awesome. Let's rock and roll, bud. So you're a student at New Zealand College of Chiropractic. Uh, you are also the global correspondent for Spinal Column Radio, is that right? I'm um, the NZ correspondent, so I've been uh, I've done NZ, interviews. Okay. Yeah, so I've done interviews down here in New Zealand and also uh, in Australia as well. Awesome, and you're also, you're running a philosophy club? Yeah, uh, that was one thing that I kind of championed when I came to uh, the New Zealand College. Uh, that was one thing that wasn't happening at the moment, and it all kind of started when I went to, uh, I, I used to go to EPOC groups before coming to college, and that was really how I got introduced to chiropractic. Um, my chiropractor at the time was running these EPOC groups in Vancouver, and it was a really great opportunity for me to see um, some of the great speakers before, uh, you know, I even started school. So I, I came to, to college with, the, with already a great philosophical understanding of, um, mm -hmm. you know, what we do in chiropractic. Well, that's kind of surprising what wasn't going on before. I want to ask you more about that. Um, yep. But be before we kind of get into the questions, sure. there's a bit of an elephant in the room. Not quite a pink elephant. It's a tiny little elephant. But you're in New Zealand, but you kind of sound like North American. You're Canadian, right? Yes, I, I'm, I came so, from Canada. So what are you doing down under? Well, that goes back to that EPOC group. Um, when me and me and my partner, we both came down here at the same time. And um, so when we were asking different chiropractors, we'd go to the, these EPOC groups, which is uh, stands for the epicenter of chiropractic, uh, which happen all over the States and Canada. But we'd go to these groups, and there'd be 80 chiropractors there. And we just went around the room asking people, if you had to do it again, where would you go? If you had to do it again, where would you go? You know, we didn't have a, a podcast like the one you, you were doing right now. So, you know, it's just one after the other, asking, 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 who, who would you get, where would you go, where would you go? And um, through that process, most people said New Zealand. And so we said, all right, pack our bags, let's go. Wow, that's, that's kind of a big jump. Yeah. Uh, had you visited before? Had you traveled down there at all? No, completely naive. Um, we had moved to Vancouver from Ontario, so I mean, we moved across Canada, and we we had done that for um, about two years, and so we kind of got used to the idea of being apart from family at that point. And I mean, obviously, we had gone to university and everything, so we'd, um, you know, we we're in our mid twenties by the time we made this decision. Um, and then it's just like, all right, might as well just keep keep heading west and and go all the way down. So where did you go to your undergraduate? Uh, the University of Western Ontario in uh, London, Ontario. Okay. So near Toronto. <laughs> and did you go ahead and get an undergraduate degree or just fulfill the prerequisites? No, I had no idea about chiropractic until I finished my degree. So uh, uh, my, my partner, Taya, um, she was working at an, at an office as a CA for three or for four years in college. Oh. So she really introduced me to the idea and you know we started dating right at the end of uh, of uni, so um, I started seeing the chiropractor there, and then we decided that we were going to move out to Vancouver together. So um, I just got under care, and then we moved out to Vancouver, continued under care, and then that's when our chiropractor there, who was really tapped into the the environment, um, introduced us to you know really um, chiropractic as an option and um, going to New Zealand as well. Okay. Um 
Now, so Taya, is she, she was a CA before. Is she going to the school with you? Yeah, so we're in the same class. Uh, <laughs> we're in school every day together. Um, obviously, we, we still live together um, with our roommate as well. So um, we see a lot of each other, but it's good. <laughs> is it working out pretty well? I think there's maybe one or two couples uh, at my school that, that do that, that are in the same yeah. class. There's definitely a lot of couples at the school, you know, that are in different... Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, different phases of their education, but there's a couple in the same quarter. Is it working out okay? Yeah, no, we're we're going strong. We keep each other motivated and and accountable as well. So uh, we, yeah. you know, we've we've run a business here together now in New Zealand. We've we have the website going. So and um, I mean, yeah, we we're we're onto it. So what business is that, and what what's the website? Um, so yeah, we started a little business um, instead of. You know, and we decided instead of working part time, again another naive decision. But <laughs> to, uh, we started uh, making these produce bags, and uh, kind of a similar products exist in North America, and they didn't exist in New Zealand at the time. So we went went ahead and started a business, and uh, we've kind of been doing that. Um, right now, we're actually trying to get rid of it because we're, now we're having some troubles with uh, immigration and visa issues. Oh, um, are you? Yeah. <laughs> So uh, yeah, we're just getting uh, getting that all sorted, and um, then our our website, which is really came came to fruition um, through listening to Spinal Column Radio. Um, you know, when Tom always talks about uh, branding yourself as a chiropractor, and that's what we wanted to start doing. So um, we we made a website called Our Extraordinary Lives, and you can get there just at uh, www.ourextraordinarylives.com, and um, Taya posts some awesome recipes up there. I post chiropractic articles, um, some essays I've written, and you know we, we're just trying to keep the momentum going. Uh, we have like 6,000 views or something. People from like 50 different countries have you know been up, tapped into it. So I mean, it's it's cool to see you know what happens when you just kind of put yourself out there. That is pretty cool. I'm gonna pull up my uh, browser here and share that with people that are watching uh, the YouTube video. Um, so you should be able to see this right now. Just yeah, cool. Uh, so it's a blog. Yeah, blog format. Um, obviously, you can search the different subjects. Whether yeah, your uh, your main um, thing is the food, or whether it's the chiropractic, or you know, a combination of both. We kind of just post things that um, you know we're interested in. So yeah. obviously, it's chiropractic, um, living a healthy lifestyle. Um, you know, a full rounded approach to kind of health and life. So uh, you mentioned before the show you were you said you were uh, training. Were you at the gym? Yeah. So we that's again part of our healthy lifestyle. So uh, we do CrossFit and um, one of, one of the things that Eric Russell did before he left the New Zealand chi uh, Chiropractic College was to get us um, a nice new gym facility. So we moved it downstairs to a spare room we had. He got us uh, a whole bunch of CrossFit equipment, some new bars, bumper plates, um, some you know gymnastics. Um, you know, rings and all, all the the posts set up for pull-ups and whatnot. So um, we have a lot of fun down there now. And that's on the campus. That's on campus, yeah. So we uh, we're hoping uh, we just had a few discussions at Western States about our new facility, but it's probably not going to be built by the time <laughs> uh, I graduate, unfortunately. But that's great. Yeah. I love that you're you know you're living and practicing kind of what you preach. Um, I wanted to mention to you. So I, I'm trying to do the same thing as well, um, yeah. and so I'm training for my first marathon. Nice. And uh, earlier today I did my longest run yet, which was a 20 miler up in the canyons and mountains of Columbia River Gorge. Right. That'd be beautiful. So if I'm uh, fidgety or grimacing <laughs> at all, it's not you. It's because I, you know, I started at 6:30 in the morning and uh, it. It was about a you know three thousand foot climb for the first yeah. six miles, and it took me forever. I was out for almost six hours total, much oh, wow. slower than I'd like to be going. But um, yeah. So anyway, just just so you guys are aware, uh, I'm super slow, but it's going to be really exciting. Uh, but anyway, back to the website though. So this is a blog. You said you have six thousand people. How did you do that? Because I have three blogs now, and I'm sure it's just me and my mom that read it. <laughs> How'd yeah. you get the word out? Uh, we just started posting stuff, really. Um, I don't know, like we posted obviously through our Facebook networks and everything, and it 
it says at the bottom like we have like 600 and something followers and I don't really know how WordPress calculates that but uh, <laughs> um, people seem to read it, people comment, people like stuff I mean so we do have interactions um, if you go to the stats and stuff you know it tells you all um, the you know people in different countries and I don't I don't even know if that's you know my friends who are traveling or you know if people are legitimately just stumbling um, through it um, I know some, some of the other like recipe websites though they'll uh, they'll link through to some of our recipes every now and then too. So it's it's really just been a grassroots uh, word of mouth sort of thing. That is really cool. Yeah, I'd assume that uh, is this on WordPress.com or is it self-hosted? Yeah, no, it's a WordPress account. Uh, it used to say WordPress, and then uh, uh, Dr. Lamar called me out on a on an episode of Spinal Farm Radio, and we had to upgrade to the, the more professional name. Meaning getting rid of the WordPress in the middle of yeah, the yeah, yeah. URL. Yeah, I think there's incredible value with having that unique URL. And I was just reading a book. Um, it was mentioned on Spinal Column Radio by Lona Cook, Dr. Lona Cook, who wrote a book about how she paid off her loans in two oh, years. Yeah. And in the book, she says the website's an important thing. So we'll be mentioning some more cool. things about that, and I'm hoping to review that book sometime. So I'm, I think I've got like 30 pages left. Sweet. So that's pretty cool. Well, hey, let's talk a little bit of, you know, what people probably want to know more about than all this geeky stuff. I love it, but uh, but New Zealand College of Chiropractic. Let me just pull up their web page, and uh, so what do you know? What do you see uh, on a given day when you go to school? What's kind of the first thing that you see when you get there? Yeah, man, it's it's a cool vibe. I mean, you walk up to the campus, and um, yeah, obviously you're out in the middle of you're in New Zealand, you're in the middle of nowhere. I mean, when you see New Zealand on a map by itself, it's like the only thing there, You like, you, all you see is blue ocean around you. You can just barely clip Australia, but I mean, you, we're, we're still even 2,000 and stuff, something kilometers from, from Sydney, which is like the closest coast to Australia to us. Um, so it's pretty far out when you think of like how far we are, especially when you're not from here. Um, yeah, so you come on the campus and it's just... Um, you know, everyone loves chiropractic, and, you know, it is really, uh, um, you know, people talk the tick, and um, it, it's really cool, because, yeah, we have people from all over the world. We have a few people from the States, uh, people from Canada, uh, people from South Africa, um, and then, obviously, people from Australia and New Zealand, and we um, form a pretty, pretty unique um, culture here. That's pretty cool. So, for those... Uh watching, I'm pulling up uh, exploringchiropractic.com, the schools page, where I've got maps of all the schools throughout the world. Uh, I thought that'd be kind of cool to see where they all fit. And I'm uh, and I'm pulling up New Zealand here, so it's right in Auckland. I kinda, I'm going to zoom in as much as I can, because I'd really like you to tell just a little bit about the area, um, you know, what what's some of the great things to see in the city. Yeah. Do you um, like so living yeah. there? Yeah, no, Auckland's um, pretty sweet. I, mean, I was living in Vancouver before, and Auckland and Vancouver in the last couple of years tied for fourth of the best cities um, to live in, especially for like young people. And um, so it's it's really cool. Obviously, we're right on the water there. Um, you can be at a beach in anywhere from ten minutes to an hour in nice. almost any direction. Um, it's winter right now, but it's still like um, you know 15 to 20 degrees outside when it's sunny. Um, yeah, it's it's a rad place to be. Uh, this, any this, any favorite things as a couple to get out and do? Yeah, we've been uh, Tay and I have been going out for a couple staycations recently. So I mean, per, we're there's a, a bunch of volcanoes in Auckland. You might not know, uh, but the oh. the whole kind of cityscape is formed by these volcanoes so you can either go up and you know hike around the volcanoes um, they're all you know dormant thousands of years um, obviously the whole city's built around them um, as you can see uh, Rangitoto Island there uh, Wahiki Island there's some great wine tours um, you can yet yeah, um, go for a hike or as they call it here go for a tramp go for um, a tramp oh okay yeah. in the bush <laughs> um, do they say in the bush like in Australia yeah or the outback <laughs> there's no outback here, there's none of space. But yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, you can go tramping in the bush, and it's really cool when you do, because, uh, you know, all the all the, the 
tree life is like ferns and stuff, and so it really looks like Jurassic Park, and you think there's going to be, you know, a raptor that's going to pop out around the corner or something. Nice, very cool. Um, I, I've been dying to get down to Australia and New Zealand, and I'll just mention real quick, kind of the inspiration, f well, one of the reasons I want to go to New Zealand, and one of the reasons that uh, I'm doing this Google Hangout thing is there's a photographer in New Zealand, probably not heard of him, but his name is Trey Ratcliffe. Okay. And uh, let's see if I can pull him up on Flickr. Uh, so he's got a website, stuckincostumes.com, and he's just an incredible photographer. He uses a unique, UT, uh, unique technique and posts full versions of his pictures for free for anybody to use. Nice. And, uh, but he just moved down to New Zealand, and I'm trying to remember what city is in. I'm not quite sure. But uh, So here's some of his photos, but... He picked it because it's just such a beautiful place. He, you know, his business is all online, yeah. and uh, and so, but he does these Google Hangouts with other photographers around the world at least weekly, and I mean he's making like a million bucks doing it. So here's a beautiful picture of New Zealand. Yeah, that that's uh, Queenstown. So that that's down on the South Island. Uh, that's a beautiful place to visit. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's where he's living. Uh, just yeah. gorgeous and. Of course, everyone knows that the Lord of the Rings trilogies were filmed down there. Yeah, uh, it's been still, able to visit any big, of those sites. Uh, tourists on that. Uh, yeah, we've actually been to Hobbiton. So um, nice. About it's about an hour and a bit drive from from the city, and uh, you can be you go on the rolling hills. Um, once you leave the city, it's all just rolling green hills on the North Island, and yeah, yeah, I like those ones down there. And yeah, just some pulling up some. For those listening, put, pulling up some images on uh, Flickr, I just searched for Hobbit Town. I don't know if yeah. it's two T's or not. Um, but yeah, just gorgeous rolling hills. I love it. Yeah, so the whole North Island, once you're out of the city, just pretty much looks like that. And um, they had all the everything set up when we went um, for filming, so it was all, it was all, you know, all the Hobbit holes were beautiful, and um, they've, they've now since built a bar there and everything, so you can actually go for a Hobbit brew and. Uh, you know, spend spend more of the day there if you want. Oh, that is really cool. That's awesome. So, what's the uh, curriculum like? Um, can you give an overview of kind of the flow from one term to? Are you on quarters, semesters? Uh, we're on semesters, so it's four year okay. program here. Um, okay. One really interesting thing coming from um, North America is that. Um, they kind of run off the British system here, so you you only have to do one prereq year before you start chiropractic. So the whole the whole program, same in Australia, the whole program is a five year program, and oh. um, so at NZCC you do four out of your five years, um, at, obviously at the NZCC, and then you can do your prereqs wherever. But obviously to practice in Canada or practice in the states, you have to have at least uh, three years of an undergraduate education, um, you know, beforehand. So that. That's what some of the people don't really realize, you know, Australians and New Zealanders who want to maybe go to practice in the states or go practice in Canada, and they don't get that educate, they don't get that previous education, and um, then you know, they they can still apply for um, to to go practice, but they it's really um, on a case by case basis. That is really good to know because the reason I didn't go down to Australia or New Zealand for school is because I saw that they're five-year programs, and I thought, no way. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm getting started late as, enough as it is, I think. Yeah. And I was like, no way. So, dang it. I could have so gone that, and, and spent yeah, that just Yeah, that was just the free rec year. Wow. Ah, that's a bummer. Um, and so what? what's the flow of the, the chiropractic curriculum? When do you start palpation? What are the basic sciences like? Yeah, the, the first day uh, I was in college, we had Bruce Lipton teaching us immunology. So if you haven't heard of Bruce Lipton, check him out. Um, you know, the things he's come up with in the last 40 years are rad. You know, all about epigenetics. He's pretty much created the field of epigenetics, you know, being able to, you know, control your whole environment through your perception. Um, so he really, you, you learn a bit of immunology, but then you learn all this other uh, amazing stuff with him. Um and then we went straight from immunology to technique, where we were, yeah, we were palpating on day one. Um, so yeah, your first technique course is all about learning how to analyze for a subluxation. That's all you do is you're you're palpating, you're motion palpating, um, checking for heat, you know, all the all the different signs you look 
<clears throat> you know, to find subluxation, you learn that first technique. Uh, you go from there, and then uh, semester two, you start diversified. And at NZCC, we do five techniques. So you actually, we actually do diversify. Then the next uh, semester, you'll do upper cervical, Gonstead, extremities. Um, and you, again, you learn the generic NZCC subluxation package, but you also learn um, all the different um, packages that go with each technique. So for Gonstead, you learn Gonstead analysis. You're using the nervoscope. Uh, you're drawing up lines on X-rays. You know, you're. Um, for Thompson, you, you go through the whole Thompson protocol. For activator, you go through the activator protocol. You're not just using, you know, like activator as force application. You're going through checking, analyzing the way someone who practices every day, um, you know, with these techniques would do it. And then obviously, right now, I'm in, I'm in my um, halfway through my third year because the semesters here start in January, and then go through till December. Um, so we're in a, technically our lap one of our last technique classes and we're doing peds so we're actually uh, we go through how to adjust babies uh, we, we have to do a physical exam on, on somebody that's four years or younger and um, then uh, then in fourth year we can see kids in the chiropractic center. Wow so that's in the curriculum that's pretty interesting at least in my school and I think a lot of the other schools it's you can get it with a club or with seminars. Yeah. But. That's pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, so that, that's all built in. So five techniques, peds, um, then we do advanced technique again in fourth year to go kind of go back over, um, you know, stuff you didn't learn the first time through. That's awesome. Um, do they focus much on basic sciences like biochemistry? And I mean, you mentioned immunology in the first yeah. semester, which is crazy. What other basic um, sciences? Yeah, that's that's the part that you probably coming from North America or wanting to go back to North America that you'd probably have to do a little bit more catch up on. Um, we're just starting to set. We're going to be writing the Canadian boards in February of uh, next year, so we're just starting to study for that now. And it's uh, <laughs> you look at some of those questions and it's pretty far out because yeah, it's going back to you know the stuff I learned in undergraduate you know six eight years ago. Um, but I mean. Uh, as far as at the college, you do um, your biochem, your um, your physiology, things like that. That's expected in your prereq. So by the time you get to uh, the college here, it's more focused on yeah the immunology, anatomy. Um, we do three anatomy courses. We do four pathology courses, uh, four neuro courses, um, and that starts from like you know neurology 101 and what is a neuron to the tracks. Um, and then into you know neurological conditions. Um, yeah, I'm in uh, neuroanatomy right now, talking about all the the medial lumniscus and spinothalamic yeah. tract and all that stuff. That's crazy to keep straight. Yeah, you. Uh, it actually, yeah, it gets more fun when you start actually looking at the conditions as much as you know, like pass the bummer and you know all that stuff. Um, but it's really cool when you can, you know, see the presentation of someone and be like, oh yeah, you know, like this and this and this is going on in the medial and miscal track or the, the lateral whatever. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so you mentioned that uh, you're coming back to Canada studying for the boards. There's some stuff that you're not getting down in New Zealand. Uh, what's, how difficult is that going to be making that transition back? I don't think it'll be that bad. It's just in in CMCC, uh, which is the school in Toronto. Um, you know, they're they're real heavy on their science. So I mean, and that's who writes the board in Canada. Is it it's, uh, the professors there? Um, so in their first year, it is um, science heavy. They do do biochem. They do um, I think a full year immunology course, things like that. So I mean, it's it's really up to you um, to kind of do you know a little bit of extra study on your own and just um, kind of fill in the gaps where you need where you need it. Now, as a as a Canadian going down to New Zealand, I understand that that's not terribly difficult because you're within the Commonwealth. Are there yeah. many U.S. citizens that are students at NCCC, and do you know at all what that process is like? Yeah, there's um, there's at least a couple. Um, Tatum, um, who she's a chiropractic kid. Um, she's kind of out there, wild child. Um, but yeah, she's she's come uh, from the States and she wants to practice back in the States. So um, she's come down. And there, yeah, there's there's another girl in first year who just started with us. Um, so for them, it's 
Um, you know, again, it's up to them if they want to be practicing in the states to do that three years education before they come to the college, and then um, and then writing boards. But I, um, a lot more news, a lot more New Zealanders and Australians uh, write the U.S. boards as well, just because they like to you know keep their options open. So people will be writing Canadian boards, U.S. boards, British boards, which might be abolished soon, um, and then you know all the other ones to kind of they they like to just kind of you know keep their options open so, and. Usually, U.S. boards are a bit less scary than the Canadian boards. And uh, one girl that just did them, um, she just absolutely smashed it. So um, it's definitely, you know, we we definitely get prepared for, you know, um, for those tests down here for sure. That's good. Good to hear. So you've uh, you've been on Spino Column Radio as yes. the New Zealand correspondent, and I've listened to a few of your interviews with with the new president of NZCC. Yeah. So Eric Russell was there for uh, not too long, right? Maybe a year or two? Two, two years and a bit, yeah. Okay, and now I, I've forgotten the name of the new president. Uh, Dr. Phil McMaster, who's been uh, the philosophy teacher at uh, NZCC since, since the school started. He's, he really helped um, get NZCC off the ground and was part of that brain trust that started the school um, and saw, you know, the first couple classes through when they weren't registered and they weren't, you know, like things, they, you know, they had to sort all that stuff out as they kind of went along. Has there been uh, any focus shift since Eric Russell left or have they continued on um, with the same goals? Um, yeah, so the board uh, of the college is, is real strong, and they're they're they are focused. And you know, it's really the president's role to come in and you know see the vision through of the board. So it's really the board that drives everything, and it's really the president's role to um, be the be the day to day person that's putting through that vision. Um, so you know, Phil was the chairman of the board before. Um, and then obviously he um, resigned his position to run for the president's position. Um, so he's been, he was the chairman of the board for 10 years. He's been with the college since its inception. So I mean, um, he's very much the, the right person for the job and really wants to see that. Um, he really, really wants to see the chiropractic vision, subluxation focus vision of the NZCC continue um, because obviously we've, we've had CCEA, which is um, the Australasian branch of the CCE. Um, so th they're the ones who do their the curriculum reviews and everything for us now. So, um, so you know, they, they want us to include some, you know, some things that to, to make us, you know, um, so we can practice in the States and Canada and do some of the, you know, the, the physiotherapy stuff and you know, offer this sort of thing. So, um, it's really just finding out how to integrate all that and keep it very subluxation um, focused as well. Yeah, you kind of brought that up because I watched a bunch of videos from um, from NZCC on YouTube that yeah. were produced when Eric Russell first took position there. Yeah. And uh, you know, in all those videos, he was mentioning evidence-based, evidence-based, evidence-based. But now, when I listen to interviews with um, so our president, is it McMaster? Yeah. I want to get that right. Yeah, President McMaster, it's philosophy, philosophy, philosophy. So I'm, I was just curious whether much had changed or whether it was just uh, just different words that they're using. I think it's just different words. I mean, the, the focus is the same. Uh, the research department at NZCC is freaking phenomenal, man. They, I've uh, heard really great things about it. The, you know... Understanding, they're doing research, you know, understanding chiropractic from a chiropractic perspective, and they're doing a lot of basic science. So, like, how is the nervous system interfered with? You know, we have this great philosophy that says, you know, nervous system interference happens, you know, bone when the bone's out of place and putting pressure on the nerves and whatever. Um, you know, but we're like, how does that happen? And that's where a lot of the criticism has come over the last hundred years is just being not being able to say how does that happen and. You know, we often go back to okay. There's it takes a dime of pressure to cut off you know 70% of the flow of, of nerve impulses, um, but you know obviously we don't know if they're good or bad or this or that or you know where they're going, where they're coming from. Um, so they're just doing basic science research that shows 
when you're subluxated, you uh, one of their big papers is subluxation and proprioception. So you don't know where your body is in space when you're subluxated as well as when you're not subluxated. You know, and that's 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 been groundbreaking just to just to show that for for the first time. And obviously, with with proprioception is huge in anyone's life, whether you're you know old and you know wanting to walk upstairs, or whether you're you know athletic and want to enhance your sports performance. You know, it's just like the, the foundation groundwork for um, being human. <laughs> I certainly could have used a little better proprioception after mile ten of my run today. <laughs> it was uh, my legs were just lagging. No, yeah, um, I bet, man. So, so definitely more of a philosophy focus at at NZCC, and you participate in the or you run the the philosophy club there. Yeah, and like I said, I, I would have expected there to be something like that when I came here, and there wasn't. And and it, um, after you know uh, meeting with some third and fourth years at the time when I was in first year, uh, there's people who were definitely interested in it, um, but it's just never gotten off the ground. And I mean, there's other clubs and things, not as many as kind of at the American schools, um, because I think we do have, you know, we're already covering five techniques, we're, um, you know, a lot of what people have clubs for is covered in our curriculum. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, there's Diverse Flag Club every week, Gonstead Club, and that's all with the people who teach it. So, I mean, you're, it's, you know, an extra hour a week to get in there and practice. Uh, there's Upper Cervical Club. Um, there's been a research club where um, one of the researchers, Kelly Holt, will bring up, will send a paper out on Monday, and then you, you'll go through it on Friday. And and so I just saw that the philosophy part was missing. And coming from that, having that epoch experience where we had every month, you know, a chiropractor coming through town and getting to, you know, hear, you know, the philosophy and, um, you know, and hear those stories that, you know, of why we wanted to do chiropractic from the start, you know, because you get, you do get bogged down by school and it gets to week like 9, 10 out of 16 and you're like, oh man, what am I doing here again? And in and those times you got to go back to your podcast, go back to your uh, philosophy textbooks, you know, get out there and, um, you know, talk to people in the field even, go, go observe at people's practices and you see, you know, people checking people's lives being turned on, you know, you know, kids in there running, like for me, I, I want a big family practice and, you know, kids running around and, you know, that organized kind of chaos. <laughs> and, and so it's getting back into that environment and getting back into that mindset that gets you through, um, you know, when times get tough. That's pretty cool. Now, you mentioned you're going online for some of these. You're going to use Google Hangouts later this week for the first time in that club. Are you yeah. bringing people in from other countries or what's what's the online component? Yeah, so there's people uh, from Australia um, through those Epoch networks, um, through some other chiropractic networks I have, um, and then, like I said, my uh, uh, Tatum helps me out as well, and she's real connected with like new beginnings and in, um, in the states, and so we've um, we've built quite a network of people who skyping in Skype in with us. So it's, I mean, we've had Liam Schubel on a few times. Uh, um, people from Canada, yeah, like I said, people from Australia, and then we'll get locals in. And so we just had Sarah Farron, who's been on Spinal Column Radio a few times. She she's um, a local here in NZ. Uh, we've had Martha Nessler recently moved to New Zealand, so we've had her um, Skype in, and we, um, she's going to be coming in in person soon. Um, so it's just kind of mixing up between um, using the resources we have here, um, having some of those philosophy nights where we literally just sit there and have a discussion, and or having you know, the Skype come in and um, sitting there and listen, you know, listening to people for tell about their practice for an hour or two or three or four, you know. Do you have just a small group around a computer or do you project it big? How does that, what's the logistics yeah, I, of that? Yeah, so we just, I just fill out the thing to, so we rent out uh, one of the lecture uh, theaters and I, I put the computer at the front, project it on the big screen. We kind of all sit in the first couple rows of the classroom and, uh, it's 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 mostly lecture style because the connection usually isn't that great. Um, there's literally a, I think they're doing some upgrade work to the the internet here in New Zealand, but there's literally one internet cord that comes into the country. Um, so I wow. think where you where you have something like 600 or something coming into New York, there's one internet cable coming into the whole country. <laughs> so uh, that can present some problems sometimes, especially when uh, you know 
um, Skyping with people overseas. But it usually turns out pretty well. Yeah, well, I'm pretty happy with how it's working tonight. So that's really cool. Well, I've got a few more questions, but I'm going to take a quick little break here, um, ask for some help from our listeners. So I started um, exploring chiropractic just, gosh, not even two months ago, I think. Yeah. And, and you know, it's, it's, a, it's a labor of love, um, but it's not... It, I'm sure as you know, you're setting up your WordPress site. You know, you try to get as many people joining as you can and, and get that community engagement. Um, but so, you know, I, I put in some money of my own and I'm, you know, I'm not trying to make money off this thing, mm -hmm. but if people like what, what I'm offering here and if, uh, if they want to contribute, I wanted to find a way that, you know, I don't want people to pay me. I just want, I want to make it possible for me to continue doing this kind of stuff. So I'm not going to ask for money. I'm not going to um, sell stuff, but a simple way is if you're going to buy stuff already, uh, you know, you can do it using these affiliate links. So I've done some affiliate things, and the one I'm going to talk about tonight is Squarespace. So Squarespace is a really quick and easy way to create your own website or blog. So there's WordPress out there, um, which is free, and I've had many WordPress sites over the years. Um, there's some effort you have to put into it. Squarespace kind of takes away all of that difficulty in the, the back-end coding and plugins that you got to add. Um, and it's just beautiful. So Exploring Chiropractic, I created on Squarespace within just a couple of hours. You know, got the donate, domain name and everything. And, you know, in the book I mentioned by Dr. Lona Cook, you know, she said the website is really important. So if you're going to start a website for your practice, this would be a great way to do it. Um, you can host the podcast, you can, there's a commerce thing that you can do now, and so you can uh, sell things, you can sell virtual books, you can sell actual products. So Squarespace, a uh, really awesome way to make a website. If you want to start a free trial for two weeks, no credit card needed, just check it out. Go to exploringchiropractic.com slash Squarespace, and sponsors there on our website, I've got a link uh, just called Sponsors. And so if you're buying stuff on Amazon, you can do that kind of stuff too. So that's it. Okay. I hate doing that kind of stuff, but I am a broke college student. So so if you like what I'm doing, you know, I'm having fun, so I'm going to keep doing as long as I can, but uh, that's something. So speaking of internet stuff, though, you, uh, <clears throat> as I've mentioned a couple times already, Spinal Column Radio, which is Dr. Thomas Lamar's long-running podcast, and I'm bummed that he just announced that he's going to kind of cut the cord on that. How do you feel about that being his his New Zealand branch? I mean, yeah, it's been a great way for um, me to kind of connect the people I know in North America with the people I'm meeting down here, and I mean, there's amazing um, chiropractors, amazing doctors in both places, so it's um, it, it's been a good kind of outlet for that, um, but I mean, I mean, there'll be something... Um, you know, we got you podcasting now. <laughs> um, so, I mean, we'll see where this goes. And then, um, you know, I'm sure he'll be back. I'm sure he'll be, you know, take the break, do what he needs to do, um, you know, in his own life. And then, um, you know, but he has that he has that bug in him where, you know, it. I, I don't think he'll stay dormant for long. Yeah, and it, his stuff is going to keep going for the remainder of the year. You know, he's got kind of stuff in the feed. I, you know, are we are we wasting our time online? Do you think, uh, you know, I'm just geeking out here, but is there value with for chiropractic getting online and doing things like podcasts? I I, I think for sure. Um, when I first started school, again, I, um, before I started the philosophy club, you know, I re I really would just wanted something that, you know, I could you know I could use to study um, study chiropractic. Um, and that's where that's where I found Spot on Column Radio is that I just typed in chiropractic in the iTunes store to look for podcasts and um, that was like one of two. I think Deed Harrison's one was the other one. Um, another one really good resource I go to is Life by Design. And um, between you know Spinal Column Radio and Life by Design and you just get you just get fed the tick like crazy. And it's um, again it's it's that it's, it's one, learning what, what we do, and the second part is just helping you stay grounded, helping you get through what we're doing, because it is, it is a long process, and, you know, uh, there will be those, those days you wake up and you're like, man, why am I doing this, why am I here, you know, um, 
you know, the, those weeks where you have nine tests in a row or something, you know. Um, so it's those times that that stuff really helps you, helps get you through. Do you have any other, um, other than those, you mentioned a few podcasts, but other online resources that you find really handy for the chiropractic student? Um, what do I look at? Um, I wouldn't say online resources. Uh, at NZCC, one of the other amazing features is the library. We have almost every edition of the Green Book. We have the Strauss Blue Books. We have pretty much, we have chiropractic technique books from that, you know, like the 50s, like the original, um, oh, what's the guy who created Diversified Technique? I forget his name, but... Uh, yeah, I can't remember it either. Yeah, we have his book from the 50s, which is just crazy. And so it's just being able to go through our library and go through all that stuff um, is what I've been working on because um, there's just so much there, you know, you, you wouldn't be able to go through it in a lifetime. And you mentioned uh, this phrase, talk the tick, and I've, yeah. I've heard it so much, and I think I have a good understanding, but, you know, I've asked around... And a lot of people have no idea, or they don't recognize when people say chiropractic or yeah. chiropractor. What does it mean to talk the tick? And what what's the deal with the tick at the end? Well, do they have uh, the talk the tick competition at uh, at your school there? They don't. Not that I've heard of, at least. Uh, I know they have it down at Life West. I'm pretty sure yeah. they have it at Sherman. Um, but no, we don't we don't hear much about it. And I've even asked some of our professors what. Have you ever heard chiropractic versus chiropractic? And, you know, again, not many people hear about it other than those that have been in, immersed in it already. So just, you know, for the sake of uh, sharing what it is, kind of give a yeah. background on it. Yeah, chiro talking to tick is just what you, is, you know, basically what you do in practice every day. It's how you educate um, the people coming into chiropractic. Um, you know, most people come to see a chiropractor because, you know, I, I hate to spread this, you know, uh, <laughs> spread the stereotype even more, but most people come because there's something going on, there's some sort of pain, because we're raised in that allopathic model where you don't, you know, very few people go to something to prevent other things or just go because it's good for you. I mean, that's why I go to chiro chiropractors, because it's good for me. It's a good life decision, like going to the gym, like eating a healthy diet, you know, like, you know, um, driving my thoughts with my purpose. Those are all healthy um, options, and chiropractic is part of that. So that's how I envision building my practice and educating my people. And so that's talking. That's talking to tick. You know, people come in and they're like, "Why am I coming in?" And you're like, "You know, we're adjusting subluxation to turn on the nerve system to turn on your life potential." Um, that's what we're doing. You know, and so um, when you're talking to tick, you're 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 educating and you're you're educating them on the philosophy and why we do what we do. And that's basically where it comes from. So Talk the Tick is a competition at a lot of schools uh, where students get up, take five minutes, I don't know if there's a time limit, and yeah, do just what you did, where they'll, they'll kind of put on a little uh, show where they're as if they're talking to their patient, explaining yeah. chiropractic. And uh, and then they're are they judged or is it just popular vote? Yeah, no, they're they're judged. Um, the one down here, um, obviously the, the ones the ones from New Zealand will go over to Australia. We'll go to a bigger competition. The ones in the states all kind of congregate in a new place every year. And yeah, they're they're definitely judged. And I think sometimes they even get some celebrity judges to come on because there's always you know a couple chiropractors and then a lay person. So you know you you get a rounded perspective of you know. Um, what they're saying. Sometimes, you know, in chiropractic, you obviously get to that point where you get all that medical jargon, you get all this stuff, even, you know, too many technical terms. And I think I, I was just at a seminar on the weekend, they said if you use um, more than three big words to somebody in one interaction, they'll tune you out after that. Mm -hmm. So if you use subluxation, adjustment, um, and, you know, one more uh, nervous system, that's three. You know, anything more than that, they'll tune you out. So it's and, kind of about uh, using more familiar words to talk with patients and help them understand it in that way. Yeah, Reggie Gold said, keep it simple, stupid. Yeah. But what's the difference between chiropractic and chiropractic? Is it a focus on philosophy? 
It is because if it, you don't have that focus on philosophy, you know, there's no focus. It's, you know, adjusting the spine to enhance the, the the function of the nervous system is what we do, and we do that through correcting subluxation. And then if you're not doing that, you're not, you know, in my opinion, you're not doing chiropractic. Hmm. But can you be doing chiropractic? You can be doing, you know, it, it goes back to if you're doing manipulation or you're doing adjustment. Um, you, you know, manipulation is moving stuff. Adjustment is correcting the one sub, you know, the subluxation, the primary that'll have an effect on the whole body. Okay, that's an interesting differentiation in the in the definition. Um, I don't think everyone would 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 separate them that way. So that's kind of yeah. interesting. I have an essay on it on my website if you want to geek out later and check it out. Oh, do you on your blog? Yeah. On that. Okay. Well, we will send people there. Um, so I got to ask, I'm asking everybody this. Ends in CC sounds like a really great school. Lots of good things going down. Um, what, if you could change one thing though, what, what yeah. do you think you would change? Probably the actual physical location of the school. It's, um, a bit out of the city, so it's, you know, it's still close. I mean, you kind of lose your perspective, like, because of how big North America is, you know, it's it's not out of the question to drive half an hour or an hour to get somewhere one way, and or two or three, <laughs> you know. Um, the people, in, people in Auckland, if, if you have to drive for ten minutes, it's too far. So, <laughs> uh, so the, the, the school's only about five or ten kilometers outside of the city, um, but I think it would be, it'd be a better experience for me. I'm, I'm more of a city person. I like to be in the hustle and the bustle to be, you know, actually out there. All right. Yeah, that doesn't sound too far. I'd, I'd run that every day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> awesome. Okay, well, Ryan Lanou, thank you so much. This has been really cool uh, talking All about right. New Zealand College of Chiropractic. Um, where can people find you online if they want to find out more and, uh, you know, what websites do you want to plug? Yeah, definitely. Um, Check out Spinal Column Radio. Check out our extraordinary lives uh, Life by Design podcast. If you want to know more, just you know, if you want to get chiropractic in your head. Spinal Column Radio, Life by Design, our extraordinary lives. Um, find me on Facebook if you want to get a hold of me, and or yeah, comment on the blog because that would be awesome. And yeah, again, yeah, thanks Nate for this interview. It's been great. Yeah, thanks again for joining. Don't go away. Uh, we'll chat afterwards. But uh, just want to say thanks to everyone watching. And if you're listening to the podcast, thanks a lot. Uh, you can find Extraordinary, uh, Exploring Chiropractic on Facebook, on Google+, Plus, on Twitter. And please join, um, join the community if you want to participate and ask your own questions. I'd love to get feedback from others. Uh, and just a quick note, because I've gotten, since I've started this, I've got lots of uh, uh, Facebook friend invites. And I really appreciate it. I do try to keep Facebook to friends and family that I that I actually know, but you can find me on so many other places. Uh, I'm on LinkedIn, I'm on Google, I'm on Twitter, just Nathan Cashin, uh, pretty much on all of those. So I do want to connect, I do want to hear from you, uh, but I'm just trying to, you know, keep Facebook to true friends. That's uh, I've just done that ever since I started. But thanks for your interest, and thanks again for watching tonight. This has been uh, episode three of Exploring Chiropractic with Brian Lanou at New Zealand College of Chiropractic. Check out exploringchiropractic.com for our other shows and to keep in touch with what's going on in the chiropractic college community. Thanks a lot.